Hey, welcome back. I'm out here on my back deck today on this beautiful 90 plus degree day with a lot of sunlight to uh, do another video for you. And, and today I figured the topic would be uh, the proper cleaning, conditioning, and protecting of vintage leather goalie pads. So this is a topic that comes up quite often. A lot of people ask questions on Facebook groups and even in my, uh, sometimes in comments or messages from YouTube. And they wanna know what the right way to take care of vintage pads would be. So I'm gonna review that today. I'm gonna let you know right up off the, from the get-go that the method I use was taught to me by Glenn Miller. Um, I use the products he recommends and I, do it all in the same kind of steps and I'll uh, I'll talk about that as we go along for my example today I'm gonna use these pads right here uh, these pads I have not cleaned since I got them six eight months ago something like that I'll do some close-ups to show you uh, the process and the different products that I use which are all in the Fibings um, brand family I use their liquid glycerin saddle soap neat's foot oil and golden mink oil paste um, and it's basically clean, condition, and protect. So I'll get set up and we'll go through this with the camera a little closer. So for the first step, we're gonna use the saddle soap and I use the liquid glycerin style and I'm gonna use a white rag on this. Um, what we wanna do to prepare the pad first is uh, make sure our buckles are unbuckled and loosen our straps. If you can remove your straps, and in most cases, uh, straps need to be replaced. So I'm not gonna do that with these pads. I'm not planning on replacing the straps. These are just gonna be for display. But I wanna loosen them all, and any of the ones I can pull through, I wanna pull them through a little ways so I can get at the leather underneath them. The little tabs are all broken loose too, so I'm gonna move them out of my way in there. Now we can get underneath there. So you always wanna, with any of the products, you wanna spray your cloth or your sponge or whatever you're using directly. You don't wanna spray the uh, leather because it can pull and stain and discolor certain areas because it's not being applied smooth, uh, evenly that way. So I'm gonna soak this rag. And I'm just gonna basically wash it off want to make sure you get down in between the different rolls okay so all I've done is the thigh rolls knee rolls and the outside um, upper roll and uh, you can see the difference so to conserve battery life I'm gonna pause this I'll finish washing this pad and come back and wrap up on this step uh, for the purpose of this demonstration too, I'm only going to do one pad fully from start to finish and leave the other one untouched so I can show a comparison of what they are um, after the fact. But uh, some of these areas I did go over a couple of times and uh, additionally I just want to remind everybody to like you sometimes have to open up the bend the knee to open up these rolls so you can clean inside of there. A lot of, a lot of grime and dirt does get trapped in there. And you gotta contort the pad a little bit because you wanna get inside of the shin rolls, get a thumb inside of there, whatever. Uh, don't forget your bindings if you're gonna not replace them. And then also the inside of the boot scoop. That pad is now clean and that's the dirt I just took off of the one pad. So I'm gonna prep for the next step and I'll be right back. Yep. Once we've let that dry and on a day like today, that's really quick here. And so now what we want to do is uh, condition the leather. Uh, remember the leather is a lot like, I mean, let's face it, it's like our skin. Um, and so people, you know, lotion their skins and use all kinds of products to keep them from drying out, that those oils and stuff absorb in. So for the case of leather, we're going to use Neat's Foot Oil. Um, this is the bigger 32 ounce uh, bottle, but I believe they make this in an eight ounce. It looks identical, but it's tiny. Um, and that's available on Amazon, all these products are. 
The way I use this is I use a little tiny sponge. So it is a liquid and you want to be careful not to get it on your clothing because it will like oil stain your clothing. But we're just going to saturate our sponge a little here. There, it's already dripping. And we're going to work that into the leather. I don't press real hard. Again, you don't want to apply it directly to the pad itself um, because it can cause oil staining in the leather as well. It'll soak in too much. You don't want to go too heavy in any one particular spot. And you want to definitely get inside of the roll uh, creases here. So this is a process, depends on how dry the leather is, that you have to kind of play it by ear and uh, apply as much. Uh, you may do two, you may do, th I've done actually three before on an old set of pads uh, applications with some time in between to let it absorb and soak in. So again, it's about getting in between all of these rolls and making sure I get a good even coverage over the whole pad. All of the leather needs to be um, conditioned. You don't want to skip any spots, even though down inside of here it almost looks like new leather. I want to get inside of there and, and get some of this oil to absorb. So again, I'm going to pause the camera. I'll finish doing this application and come back. So I just wrapped up two applications of uh, Neat's foot. I didn't really wait a whole lot in between. But you'll see what I'm noticing now is as I'm reapplying it, I'm starting to get some pooling on the outside. It's no longer starting to uh, suck it in and absorb it right away. Um, so that kind of lets me know I'm at the point where it's, it's pulling in enough moisture for itself. Um, big thing here when I'm doing this is I want to remember, especially in any areas where they're stitching through the leather, it's real important, important to make sure you're conditioning that real well. And a lot of times that's along this edge and in these... Um, seams in between the rolls but that'll just help the stitching uh, last longer because it won't pull the through the leather because of dry leather want to point out uh, like if this was a cooper pad where i have like a nylon or a canvas side i'd have to be really careful with this i don't want to get too much oil dripping on that nylon and canvas because that can cause some oil staining too i feel like eventually it works itself out and it fades away but for a while it would show uh, uh the marks but on this one, I have leather, I have leather, and I have leather. So I'm, I'm easily able to uh, get, be liberal with my application here. Now I'm gonna let this one sit for a little while in the sun and let it really absorb. Uh, make sure you get your bindings. And here's another crevice that you got, the little fold over where the seam is. You wanna make sure you're getting a good amount of the oil inside of there as well. I'm just gonna let that sit for a little while in the sunlight and then i'm going to come back and any areas that are pooled still that didn't absorb i'm going to dab them dry with a towel okay i'm back it's been about 20 minutes sitting in the direct sunlight so i'm going to take a quick look at the pad and i am not seeing any puddles but i had my white towel to dab it if i needed to so you can you can already see a big difference in the look a lot less like this is all dried out looking a lot less dried out looking on this particular pad the leather is really supple now whereas here it feels like stiff and crusty um, so we're going to move on to the final step now we've cleaned it and we've like revitalized that leather by conditioning it with neat's foot so next we're going to move on to golden mink oil and this is a waterproofing oil um, it's really a paste, it's not liquid, though it's been sitting in the sunlight so it might be a little, little mushy. Uh, I really do find the direct sunlight and heat on the pad is best for this step. It really helps this uh, absorb into the like surface layer of the leather. Uh, the Neat's foot like kind of soaks back through and penetrates the whole thickness of the leather. And the mink oil just uh, kind of penetrates the surface and uh, protects it from water absorption which is then when the water uh, dries out that's what dries out your leather it takes the oils with it so on this one here again i use the same kind of little sponge i'm pretty low uh, but we're gonna we're gonna get this pad done i'm sure so i'm gonna get a good chunk on there 
and I'm again I want to make sure I'm getting in these uh, inside of these cracks too, these spaces but I'm gonna apply this pretty liberally in the direct sunlight remember to uh, do what you gotta do press and flex you're not really trying to scrub with this sponge but you're using the sponge to be able to get into the wrinkles so you're not leaving out any spots from getting treated with any of these products you can just see how it turns right to liquid because of the sunlight so I will go ahead and pause this and come back once I've finished applying this while I'm wrapping this up I'll point out a couple things again um, this is your waterproofing step. So this is what's protecting all your leather from water getting in and then water drying out and bringing oils out with it and so on. So you really wanna make sure that you're getting everywhere that the stitching is um, to make sure that you're protecting as best as you can. You wanna get in this little flap, the overlap here of, this, of the uh, side stitching um, around where the, any straps are sewn on and so forth. Well, that's it. So now we're gonna let that sit in the sunlight again. Um, I'm gonna come back here in a little while and look for any more puddling. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna end up just kind of like buffing it with a clean, soft rag. Okay, so I'm back. It's been about 10 more minutes in the hot sun. I see a little bit of puddling, so I'm gonna dab those. And then I'm just gonna kind of buff them with this, just a soft white cloth. This is uh, in case basically any of that like waxy residue dried at the top somehow on the surface, just kind of buffing it in so there's not a blob there. And so there we have it. That's a cleaned, conditioned, and protected vintage leather, natural leather goalie pad. See if you can notice the difference between the two. Uh, do a few side-by-side -side photos to put in here, but then I'm also going to come back with some final thoughts on some things about this process. This is really the process to follow for natural leather goalie pads, um, not necessarily the process to follow for colored leather, and definitely not the process for modern or uh, synthetic, you know, even into the Cooper Durasoft or uh, any of the other Gen Pro and so on. Um, you don't want to use these products on those. There's other products for that, and that's a whole different topic. In summary, use the right products, be patient, use the right process, and you'll be able to make these pads continue lasting for a whole nother generation to come around. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. Feel free to share it with anybody that might see some value in it, um, and leave comments if you have those as well. Thanks. Oh, that's hot. little ways so I can get at the leather underneath them. You'll see on these pads how uh, it looks like for this set I'm only gonna be able to do the one pad anyways because I didn't realize I was that low.